Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a step-by-step -step walkthrough of how Later works and how I use it in my content planning for social media. Now this was a video that was requested a couple times um, from comments on a couple of my last videos. So I wanted to break it down for you guys. Now, if you aren't familiar with Later, it is a social media scheduling app. Um, it's for desktop and for your mobile phone uh, where you can schedule all of your different content to Facebook, to Pinterest, they have TikTok now and Instagram, of course. So it's a really great, well-rounded app. It's one of my favorite ones that I use in my business and I've talked about it a lot on this channel. So let's jump over into my computer where I can walk you through the step-by-step -step on how I use it and the different features that Later has. Okay, so I am on later.com and this is where you actually log in to get into the back end of your later account. If you wanted to create a free account, you can absolutely do that. Um, there should be a sign up button somewhere around here, but I'm just gonna log into my account here so you can see the back end of this. So when you first log into your later account, you're going to see on the left hand side here, a big place where you can load all your media. And this is one of the main reasons why I love later so much is because you can actually save all of your content that you're going to post onto your social media platforms in this little side media content area. So you're not having to connect to another device. It just makes it super simple. You can also upload straight from your phone to this app as well so that it, it'll automatically sync to the desktop version and you can have your content content easy to drag and drop. Now up here on the left hand side here you have stories preview week and month and this is going to control how you can see the different calendars. So if I go to month you're going to see here the different months and you can you can drag and drop content just like that. I'm gonna exit that or you can come over to the week view here and drag and drop things on a weekly basis as well. Uh, another good functionality of later is that it does have story planning as well or story scheduling. So here, if you click on stories, you can actually schedule your story. So again, you would just drag and drop it over to create a story. So those are kind of the functionalities there. If you click on the preview button, this is going to allow you to see what your grid and your feed is going to look like once you've scheduled a bunch of posts, which is also really nice. Now, if you have a business partner or you're a social media manager who wants to share this with clients, you can actually use this share calendar button and it's gonna generate a preview link that you can either send to a business partner or a client or whoever you're working with that needs to see what your feed is going to look like with the scheduled posts you've created. So that's a nice feature as well. Now at the top here, I'm just gonna go back to the month view. At the top here, you have all of your different social media icons, and this is the different accounts that are synced with my later account. So I have my Facebook, I have Pinterest, and I also have TikTok. Now, if you go plus sign here, you can actually add a couple more different things here. So you could add a Twitter account if you wanted to, um, but those are the main platforms that later syncs with. So Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and TikTok just recently. So. If you are new to Later, you might not have access to TikTok yet. They were launching this as a part of a beta program that I got access to early. So if you do not see this on your platform as an option, that is why. Now with the free account on Later, you can sync one of these per Later account. So if you had two Instagram profiles, for example, you would need to upgrade your plan to have more than one of the same platform. So just keep that in mind as well. So if you had, um, you can go back to back to calendar here. Now on the left hand side here, there is a menu of different things that are a part of later. So we're on the calendar tab now. If you click on media library, this is where you can keep all of your different media and you can also add tags to it to or labels to help organize yourself. So for example, if I click on the right hand corner here, you'll see all my different labels that I've used to organize my photos. So if I click on Wanderland photo shoot, for example, this is going to bring up all the different photos I have that my professional photographer has taken for me. Now, if you come over to the left hand side again into menu and you go to conversations, this is where you can actually manage the different conversations that you've had on your different accounts. So right now you can only manage your actual Instagram comments, but this would be a nice way if you wanted to manage comments on your desktop, a way for you to do this, or say you had uh, an assistant or a, or a virtual assistant that you wanted to manage your comments, she could actually access your account right through here without having to have it on her phone. So that's a nice thing as well. Next, you can come over to analytics. 
and this is going to give you a breakdown of all of your analytics. So this is a nice overview of all the different things here. If you go to audience, you can see how active your audience are at certain times, which is a really nice tool to make sure you're posting your content at the correct times. Uh, next, you can kind of see your demographic. So I'm mostly female, but this is going to change for yourself. Um, then you can come down to where are most of your audience members coming from as well. Now, keep in mind that later only has analytics for Instagram. And if you hit this top button up here, you can also look at analytics for Pinterest. If you have your Pinterest account so, synced up as well, but you do not have analytics for Facebook or TikTok. So I do recommend looking at Facebook Creator Studio um, for some free analytics on your Facebook page. Uh, let's go back over to Instagram here. So again, you can kind of come over and see all of the different things. So your story performance and your hashtag analytics. So this is also really nice to make sure that you're using the right hashtags and that your hashtags are actually working. So that's a nice thing here. It gives a lot of details here on industry hashtag trends and, and all that information. So I really highly re recommend that you dive deep into some of these analytics for your own accounts. Next, if you come over to the left-hand side and go collect media, there's a bunch of different options here. So this is really handy. Some of these tools are really handy for managing and making your workflow of social media a lot easier. So the first one's hashtag. So if you had a specific brand hashtag or something that you were giving out to the public to, you know, you're saying, you know, hashtag Wanderman Creative on your post so that I can see it, this would be a really great way of collecting that data. Let's try doing a female business owner and see what might pull up with that. Perfect. So it's pulling up a bunch of different posts that have used female business owner in the last seven days. So tons of them here. So I could do a couple different things here. I could click on them and I could add to library, meaning that it's going to go right into my media library for me to repost this information. So this is really good for finding user generated content that you might want to repost. Now, I will say that when you're doing this strategy, please make sure that you are giving credit where credit is due and making sure you're taking the original creator of these different pieces of content. The next thing you can do is also view on Instagram. And so if I did that, you could come over here and again, look at the piece of content, maybe follow this person, engage with it, whatever you wanted to do here. So those are two things you can do with that. Next, if you come back over into Collect Media and you click Profile, this will actually allow you to collect media from certain people's Instagram profiles. So again, if you had um, two different accounts that you were trying to sync between, you could do that. I don't even have it set up here. Okay, now if you come on the left-hand side, go back to Collect Media and go Profile, you can actually um, bring in content from someone else's account if you wanted. So this is just a client's account that I help run and I could bring in content of hers to my profile as well if I wanted to. So that's kind of a fun thing if you were managing a couple different profiles and you wanted to sync them together or if you had a partnership with someone and you wanted to bring in their, their content, you could do that as well. Next, if you go back to Collect Media and you go to Stock Photos, this is something that I believe is only available on the paid plan, um, but you can actually bring in different photos from unsplash.com for completely free. So what you would do is you could search. Um, so I could say computer, for example, if I wanted to bring in a picture of a computer and let's say I wanted to post this one with this dog, right? I would just hit the check mark and then add to library. And then it's going to load. And then if you come back over to your media, to unclick this um, label, it's actually gonna show up right here and it's gonna be labeled Unsplash. So there you go. I could then come back over into my calendar and drag and drop that right into the main calendar here for me to use as a post, okay? I'm going to leave that because I don't wanna actually do that. Next, I'm gonna back, come back over to Collect Media and I'm gonna come back to Tags. So again, this is another really great way for you to collect media that you've been tagged in. So this is actually going to um, pull up all the different pieces of content that you've been tagged on on your Instagram account. So if you ever wanted to repost something or share something that you've been tagged in, this is where you could do it really easily. Next, come back to collect media and go back to mentions. And again, this is the same thing. Um, you can actually collect posts where you're mentioned. Next, come back to collect media and you're gonna come down to URL. And this option actually lets you collect media from a URL. So I'm gonna put my website in here and see 
what comes up. Perfect, so these are some different images that I have on my website. So if I wanted to um, repost those or if I wanted to repost an image from someone else's site, I could actually come in here, do the same thing, click on it and go add to library. Click on it, go add to library there. So again, when you're doing this from someone else's content, you're really gonna wanna make sure that you're copying some of this page information so that you can give credit to the original content owner, just like it says right here on the left-hand side. The last piece of this collect media button is contributors. Now I don't have any contributors set up on my account, but what's really nice with this is that if you had multiple people on your team that you wanted to have contribute to your account or take pictures and, and upload for you, you could actually add contributors. So I could say get started and then enter their email address. So I could create an email address for them to submit information to. This is also really handy for client work. So I have a couple different other profiles attached to this account in the left-hand corner here. So if I was managing someone else's social media account using later, I could actually create an email address for them to send information to, and then it would automatically be collected in media library for me to then use. So this kind of takes away them having to upload something to Google Drive or Dropbox or email it to you. It's all just gonna be really seamless and enter into later automatically. So you could just create an email address, say my name, and then it ends it at summit at submit.media and then um, they'll actually be able to upload content automatically. So that's the collect media options. The last option is link in bio. And what this does is it makes your feed shoppable. So this would be really good if you had a product-based business or you, you know, something like that where you wanted people to actually pull up different links according to what each picture was. So this is how you would do it. You would click on the photo here, add a link to the bio, go through all of them, and then copy this link in bio link here and add it to your bio on Instagram. So that's the main kind of dashboard on later here. Let's go through actually scheduling a piece of content to Instagram. So I'm gonna come back to the calendar view here and I'm gonna just say, let's schedule a piece of content for March. So I'm gonna come down here and find, you know, just a picture that I'd like to post. Okay, so let's say I wanted to post this photo right here. So what I'm gonna do is I just drag and drop it over onto the calendar here and then start writing my captions. So I'm just gonna say, this is a test. The next thing you can do is you can actually add hashtags to it. So you can go hashtag female, hashtag marketing, whatever you wanted your hashtags to be. The no another nice thing about later is that you can actually have saved captions. So if I click this little saved captions button, I have all of my different hashtag groupings here which if I just click on it, it's actually automatically gonna bring it into the caption. Now this saves you tons of time. And if you wanna learn more about creating hashtags for your business and hashtag groups that are gonna save you time, I'll make sure to link my other YouTube video where I go through this in the YouTube cards above this video. But say you wanted to add this guy in here and that was what you wanted your um, caption to be. The next thing you could do is you could tag people. So I could say Wanderman Creative here. And save user tag and done. So you can tag multiple different accounts. You can also add a first comment. So this goes back to if some people like to put the hashtags in um, in your actual caption or if you like to put them in your first comment. Now I do have another video explaining all about the difference between putting your hashtags in the comments or the, or the caption. So if you're wondering more about that, I'll make sure to link it in the YouTube cards above as well. But this is where you could do that if you wanted to put it in the captions. You can also go and add a saved caption as well from your list um, here as well. This is where you would put your link in bio. So say I wanted to add my YouTube video and the last option is to add a location. So I'm gonna add where I live, Edmonton, Alberta, and it's gonna search for that. So the next thing is you can actually set the date and time that you wanted this to go out on. So I'm gonna say I want it to go out on March 17th at 1 p.m. and I don't want it to go automatically. I want it to actually send a notification to my phone so I can make sure that you know there's nothing going wrong with it or anything like that. So I have too many hashtags here, so I'm gonna delete those. So that's everything. Say this is the perfect post. I have everything completed and in there that I want to. I would just hit save and that's going to add it to the calendar here. Now, if I come back over into preview, you're gonna see that that is now added to my preview here and I could drag and drop this around if I wanted to. So if I had a multiple different photos scheduled, I could drag and drop them by just clicking and dragging to make sure that it looks exactly how I want it to look and save changes. 
Awesome. Let's go back to the month view here. And if I wanted to post a piece of content to multiple different platforms at one time, I could come up to the top here. My Instagram is highlighted right now, but all I would have to do is hover and click this little plus button besides Facebook and beside Pinterest for an example. And now all three are highlighted. So what I could do now is schedule a piece of content to go out on all three platforms. So let's say I wanted to do this boat right here. So I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it over. Next, it's going to bring up the same thing it did before. So all three platforms are now enabled. I would write a caption here, maybe add some hashtags from my saved captions like that, and then made it make a date and time. So I want to go to 2 p.m. and hit next. Now it's going to actually give me options to change it per platform. So for Facebook, for example, I wouldn't want any hashtags. Next here, it's going to tell me that this image needs some editing. So I'm going to click edit and I'm gonna make it square so that it fits into Instagram, okay. Perfect, that looks good. I'm gonna add maybe a link to my bio here. And then Pinterest, it's gonna ask me which board I want it to send to, so I'm gonna save that one. And then I'm gonna add a website for Pinterest as well. Maybe change some of my caption here. Then I'm gonna say create three posts, and then it's going to schedule to all of those different platforms. So there you have it. That was a complete walkthrough tutorial on how to use Later. I hope this was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions on anything that I covered, make sure to drop them in the comments below and I would be happy to help you out with that. And if you like this video, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you next week. Bye guys.